Hello there, Flip here on today. Uh, I think it's finally time to tackle this topic as it seems to have gotten even more heated than usual and more controversial on what stance you take. And since Kazuha's rerun is in a few days, I think now is the perfect time to address the Kazuha vs. Sucrose debate for those of you who want to pull him and those of you who just want more insight in general. But before we do that, as always, if at any point during the video you are entertained or informed, make sure to drop a like and even consider subscribing as I talk on various topics regarding Genshin's meta and I'll try to keep you updated. Now, before even addressing the strong points of each character and whatnot, I just want to say both Sucras and Kaza are top tier S tier units, it's not like either of them are bad. And saying that there is a huge gap between these characters is completely disingenuous. I'll quickly give a short overview on both of them before covering and comparing both of their aspects like their buffing, grouping, accessibility, unique strengths and investment. To start, let's quickly go over the Onimo Twink, he's a 5 star Onimo sword unit. That's actually good. He's built on 4vv, you use him to swirl, debuff, and he also buffs with his ascension 4 passive. There is also using Kazaha on Thundering Fury to enable um his disgusting sexual fantasies of becoming a male stripper, but it's Pride Month, I won't judge. But honestly, these teams aren't really that good or relevant enough to the discussion to matter. Kazaha can also be run on an ADC build instead of a full EM build, which he normally runs, when you're using something like Zhao or Wanderer with C6Rs on. So overall, as a debuffing crowd controlling support, he is a great unit that will add value to any account really. How much value does depend on circumstance, as there's a lot of great teams that don't need or require him to function at all. But he does open a lot of doors, so he is someone you should always look to pick up if you can. Now onto Sucrose, she is a 4 star Onimo Catalyst unit that is actually good. <laughs> She functions quite similar. Fuck. She functions quite similarly to Kazaha. She also runs the Viridescent set to debuff enemies, and she also enables your teammates to do more damage. But instead of buffing damage bonus, she buffs EM. She also can buff damage bonus too with her C6, but that relies on her completely jank and inconsistent burst. So unless you're on an aggravate team, her burst or this damage bonus isn't really highlighted. Sucrose doesn't run anything other than 4vv, but being a catalyst user, instead of just swapping in and out, you can just use her as a driver and auto attack with her to proc off your damage dealers like Jinxho, Yulan, Fischl, etc. Which will also consistently swirl, which adds up for a good amount of damage in AoE. Sucrose is basically a priority to build if you get her on a fresh account, as she also opens up a lot of doors and never really falls off in utility for you later on unless specific circumstances which I'll address later. And now that we know both of our fighters, let's look at more specific categories to compare them. Alright, let's just take this bandaid off. For any mono element team that doesn't depend on amplifying reactions, which is teams such as Mono Pyro, Freeze, Red and Hyper, and so on and so on, Kazaha will just always win. For another clear winner, on Aggravate theme, Sucrose is not only easier to swirl with as she can auto attack with Fischl for Electro Swirls, but her buffing shits on Kazaha here. At 650 EM, she gives 180 EM to the rest of your team, which benefits all of your characters, even the Dendro unit. And on top of that, she can run Hakushin Ring, which increases your elemental damage bonus by 20% at R5. And because you will always get an Electro Swirl on this team, you will get an additional 20% elemental damage bonus from her C6. Which means you give the same amount of elemental damage bonus as a 1000 EM Kazuha while also giving your teammates EM in the process. So it's just a Sucrose diff. And then outside of those two teams, you have all the teams that just don't use Sucrose or Kazaha at all, leaving you with vaporized teams left. With the TTDS, Sucrose does tend to also just buff your pyro unit's vaped hits more than Kazaha. Kazaha has the strength of being able to amplify non-vaped hits and buffing your hydro unit, but at the same time, double swirling on Kazaha is just a lot harder than double swirling on Sucrose at least in single target. People always love to talk about how hard Sucrose is to play, which I'll touch on later, but if you actually want to get full value of your Kazaha, which involves learning double swirl setups, they are actually harder on Kazaha than on Sucrose. In order to double swirl on Kazaha in Vaporize teams, let's look at International first. You need to have one unit of Hydro on the enemy and be able to ENQ with a Pyro infusion. For Hu Tao, you swirl and infuse the Hydro with your Q, use Amber's Q to outpace the Hydro or on the enemy, and then during the window before Kazaha's Q ticks again removing the pyro, you have to quickly swirl on Kazaha, which is extremely hard to get perfectly every time. <laughs> and then for more traditional vape teams, it's just a lot complicated. You either need to have extremely high ping or, you know, just hold E with Bennett. 
I'll leave a link down below so you guys can go look at it. And to be fair, I feel like people do exaggerate this a lot. You can just skip the double swirl setups and in AoE you just have to apply Pyro and Hydra to one target and swirl. But at the same time, Sucrose can also do that. So generally, unless you're going for mono element team, Sucrose is just a more reliable and better buffer objectively. Oh yeah, I didn't even mention it. Do you want to know how easy her double swirl setups are? Apply Pyro and while Jing Cho or Yolan's bursts are up, just auto attack and you have your double swirl. So if you think Kaza is going to significantly advance her vape, aggravate her national teams, not really? <laughs> Alright, here I think is the number one reasons why people love to say Kaza is better than Sucrose practically, and that is for grouping reasons. Kaza has a stronger initial pull as well as a wider radius as well as the fact that he sucks enemies pause into you instead of Sucrose whose grouping is centered around the target instead of herself. Kaza's grouping is very easy so I see why a lot of people prefer it but it doesn't mean Sucrose's grouping is bad. A lot of people try to group with her the same way they do with Kazaha, end up flopping and then say Sucrose has shit grouping. I'll give a tip as someone who has been using Sucrose since launch, skipped Kazaha's first two banners and played Aika Freeze and Raiden Hyper with Sucrose. Do not try and group the one in the center, and you can push them slightly by running into them. The one furthest away may also try and chase you which is amazing, and then from here you should have an easier time catching multiple enemies in your skill radius. Here is an example of this that I'll put up on screen. Also, nev never, never start with her burst. It only pulls enemies into a certain point then pushes them up, so make sure all the enemies are grouped before using the Q. Also, if you don't know which enemy is being auto-targeted to be the center of Sucrose's skill, then auto-attack right before and it will show you what enemy is being targeted. Sucrose's grouping can also help against further away enemies, but that is really niche so eh. Overall, I think both of them have good grouping, but Kaza's grouping is just more applicable and easier to enact, so I'll give him the point. Hello, my fellow free-to-plays. So accessibility is going to overlook how hard these characters are to play, their weapon choices, what characters they accommodate, and they both run the same artifact so that's irrelevant. Looking at weapon choices, all of Kazuha's best weapons would be Zephos and Favonius. Iron Sting and the Umbrella don't do much for him and also require good luck on ER substats or just running in ER sands, which is less gain for the amount of EM and DR, so they are just worse for him. And Freedom Sworn while being better than Iron Sting and the Umbrella is virtually useless. So Kaza's weapons are both Ziphos and Fav, which both are unguaranteed gacha weapons, which also both kind of want refines. Fav more so than Ziphos for Kaza's case. Where with Sucrose, her best weapon being TTDS for buffing on Vape, which is pretty much a free 3 star. And Hawkishin Ring on Agrafe and Taser teams, which is also a craftable that you can max up for free. You can also use Sacrags on her for general purpose use, it's what I like to run but it isn't really necessary. Moving on to how hard they are to play, besides double swirl setups which you can just skip if you really don't care to learn or for mono teams where you don't need to swirl, Kaza just is significantly less mechanically demanding than Sucrose. He is just skill burst and leave. And in Sucrose's case, a lot of the time to maximize team DPS. This means weaving in auto attacks and using jump and sprint cancels to get over skill and burst quickly. And we've already talked about her grouping, so yeah. Even if you aren't trying to do anything complicated like double swirling, Sucrose just takes a lot more effort to use, which is a hassle a lot of people just don't want to go through. And Kazaha also has a not dog shit elemental burst that helps to be an elemental trigger for some teams like Super and Raiden Hyper. Oh yeah, and also because I think I'm talking too much for all of you with low attention spans, here is a tier list of who generally wants who. So TLDR of this whole section, Sucrose is easier to get geared and Kaza is much easier to play, while they both cover almost the same amount of units so they're equal there. Next point. Okay, so we are 3 years into Genshin basically and a lot of people have already got one Kaza by now especially with how good his banners have been. So it's not unreasonable to assume you have multiple copies of Kaza, which of course as a 5 star unit having better constellations on him is obviously a merit. A lot of people like to discard vertical investment but we've had how many reruns of him at this point? Kaza C1 is good for his personal damage and extra crowd control. It does extend rotation but it really isn't a hindrance at all, so overall it's a solid constellation. The CT though is very good and if you do manage to pull this besides using Sucrose as a driver, Kaza kind of just eclipses Sucrose in everything at C2. So if you can use Primal Gems to invest into a C2, not his weapon, it's shit, then Kaza just becomes the better unit generally. So yes, I'll give Kaza investment. Going over Sucrose's unique strengths, as Kaza is probably tired of all the glazing I just did, Sucrose has Anima auto attacks which allows you to augment your rotations for specific content, 
If an enemy is about to die and you have Fischl up for example, you can just use Sucrus to drive Fischl until the enemy dies instead of having to restart your rotation. This also allows you to keep VV uptime very easily even when your skill is on cooldown. And this little QT Patootie is also good enough to act as a dedicated driver for your team. This is how the entire Taser archetype was formed and there are many other teams where you can use Sucrus to drive. Sucrus on teams where she isn't even being a dedicated driver also has amazing range, being able to hit immobile enemies from further away. And as I said before, her auto attacks give her extremely easy double source setups when paired with Jingcho or Yolan. Sucrus also being able to do things like go bus rolls enable teams like Suko Kumon, which... Yeah, never mind, let's not talk about the team, it's garbage. Sucrus can also act as an amazing Onimo battery, which is relevant for some characters like Zhao, or being able to run less ER on double Onimo teams. Sucrus's burst, although can be very inconsistent and is generally not recommended to use a lot of the time, is very good at staggering and giving some suck to heavier enemies. So Sucrus's unique strengths are Onimo auto attacks, allowing her to constantly debuff and buff, driving capabilities, flexible rotations, amazing effective range, being able to swirl entities, amazing Onimo battery, and massive stagger and pull through her burst. Now onto this bozo. Kazaha has the most consistent grouping in the game, higher all-field damage for his field time even in single target, being able to avoid and maneuver attacks with his skill, and he also has a massive burst radius that can enable reactions. So his strengths are his consistent grouping, comparatively higher all-field damage, vertical mobility, massive burst radius that is able to act as an elemental enabler, and a lot more streamlined gameplay. And for me, I think I would just give Sucre's unique strengths here. Her Onmo auto attacks allow her to have two dedicated styles of play that are both effective. Where Kazaha again is just a lot more streamlined, he does his job and he does it very effectively and very well. I mean, yeah, you can talk about Kazaha as an elemental trigger for suplex teams, but Sucrus can also be a hyperbloom electro trigger for some teams due to her swirl splash and stuff like that. So that is two points for both Sucrus and Kazaha as well as them tying for one. Overall, both of these units are great and it really shouldn't matter who you think is better. I hope this video would just give you more insight into the strengths and understanding both of these characters. Now me, I personally think Sucrus is a better unit, I just use her in more of my teams and I also know how to group with her so she doesn't make me feel uncomfortable. But yeah, if you were to tell me you think Kaza is a better unit, that's fine. But you're a fucking idiot. And on that note, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe and comment where your thoughts are on this debate. As I love to hear and I respond to almost every single comment. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys on the flip side. Peace.